Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks and welcome to the city of Murcia. The river that you can see behind me is the Segura River and I'm going to show you around this city and see if this city is a decent city to live in for somebody like you or somebody like me. An extremely noisy bus just passed by, that's one of the problems of this city, but I'll talk about that as I go for a walk around, so uh, let's go. Now the objective of this video today is to go for a walk around the city, check out Murcia City and see if it is a decent city to live in or a decent city to visit should you be planning a trip to this country. We'll look at some of the pros and some of the cons of this city, so uh, let's go and do that now. Now I'm going for a walk this morning along the Gran Via, the Gran Via of Murcia, a street that splits the city. I would say that this is the downtown of the city. A bustling city is Murcia, around 450,000 people I think, so it's a, a decent sized city. And uh, Murcia is located in the southeast of the country. The region of Murcia is squeezed in between Andalusia and Alicante, I believe. It also has a border with Castilla-La Mancha, the Albacete province, so it's squeezed in between those areas of Spain, but it is on the coast. There is a Mediterranean part to Murcia. I'm not going to visit it because the city of Murcia is a landlocked city some 40-50 kilometers from the coast, I think, but don't quote me on those figures. Now I'm doing my tour today with little Mia. She's walking along here beside me. Uh, faithful companion is Mia and she's enjoyed the city so far. Haven't had too many problems finding green spaces for little Mia to have a sniff around so that's been a pro. Now here's something you won't see every day anymore, the old newspaper stand on the street. They are disappearing quickly. Now I've decided to get off the main street because it was incredibly noisy. That's a problem of this city but it's a problem in every Spanish city as we know. The uh, types of buildings that Spanish cities have make them uh, very, very noisy as the noise bounces off the sides of buildings. So uh, that's a negative side of the city in my opinion, the noise. Now the building that we just saw there is landmark number one. The idea of this video is to walk around and check out some of the main landmarks. For example, the cathedral, that will be one of the last things that we see. But uh, as I walk through the city, we'll see fantastic buildings like the one that we have there in the background. Don't know what it is, but uh, I'll find out and I'll put it down below. Another landmark here, a historical landmark with a modern landmark, El Corte Inglés in the background. Now Murcia is also a historical city but I'm not going to talk too much about the history of Murcia. If you want to find out about the history of this city go and check out an encyclopedia or Wikipedia or something like that to find out more. This is more of a story of modern day Murcia and as I said before some of the pros and cons of a city like this here in Spain. Now, although I complained about the noise earlier, there are some things about Murcia that I do like. And uh, one of the things is that there are plenty of spaces for pedestrians. A lot of the streets have been converted into pedestrian streets, so getting around very easy and also relatively traffic free, local traffic only. Now, Murcia is what they call a provincial capital the capital of the province of Murcia or the region of Murcia and uh, in my opinion provincial cities in this country are the best places to live when it comes to quality of life and Murcia in that regard is no exception and I reckon that if you speak to any of the locals here they will tell you that the quality of life here is very very good if you can find a job that is because unemployment is a big problem here in fact it is the number one concern of locals in this area the number one concern unemployment the number two concern is water and I'll tell you about that later on in the video because it's a serious problem peak hour traffic in Murcia as we can see not too bad 9 a.m. 8 degrees Celsius currently I'll talk about the weather in a moment but uh, not too bad the traffic if you compare it to other big cities, for example, Madrid. But let's be honest, you can't compare Madrid with this city. Madrid is 10 times bigger. Now over there we can see a sign that says homenaje al agricultor. Very important here in Murcia is agriculture. In fact, this area, the region of Murcia, is known as the market garden of Spain because of all of the produce that is produced here 
fruit and veg mainly. And this area has grown on the back of fruit and veg. Nowadays, tourism and construction, but fruit and veg, very, very important in this region. And it's good too. But that hasn't always been the case because 60 or 70 years ago, Mortia didn't produce a lot of fruit and veg, but then they discovered water and that is what has changed this region. Because about 40 or 50 years ago, somebody had the fantastic idea to bring water from the north of Spain or the central north Spain to this region. And that's what changed things. And the engineering feat that has brought water to this area is known as the Traspase Tajo Segura. As I said, water is diverted from other Spanish rivers, for example, the Tagus River, down into the Segura River, and that is what feeds the fields down in this part of the country. If it weren't for that, there would be some serious water problems in this part of Spain. Now, something I didn't know, that Murcia has a tram system. Interesting. Now, funnily enough, I've just been talking about water in this region, and behind me, I have the water management company Aguas de Murcia. And uh, I'll continue the story about water in this region now. Now, I mentioned before that water is the second biggest concern for locals in this area, the first being unemployment, as I previously mentioned. And uh, water has become an extremely hot political topic in this country and in this region in recent times because people in another part of Spain, for example, Castilla-La Mancha, where the water comes from for this area, are not happy about losing their water and they want it to stop. And therefore, the local government here is extremely concerned about what's going to happen if that water supply is cut off. And although I'm not an expert on the subject, water management in places like Murcia has been an issue for decades. And if the water supply to this part of Spain is cut, then there's a real chance that this area will turn into a desert, or at least that's what some people say. And another thing is that you could kiss goodbye to a lot of that agriculture, unfortunately. So a hot political topic, as I said, the subject of water in this part of the country, not only here, but also in the Valencian community as well. Alicante, for example, have a similar problem. And as we know, Almeria in the south of Spain in Andalusia is uh, also a virtual desert. So water problems in this part of the country and uh, no political solutions for them at the moment, unfortunately. Now I'm currently in another landmark here in Murcia. This is called the Plaza Circular, the uh, circular square we would say in English, although that doesn't really make sense. And uh, all roads lead to this plaza here in Murcia. All of the main roads, as I can see, lead to this square. And uh, it's an important hub. We've got an important fountain behind me. There's places where kids can play and lots of people bring their dogs here to have a sniff around and do whatever dogs do, which is what I did yesterday. But uh, a busy part of Murcia is this Plaza Circular. Buses everywhere, scooters everywhere, bicycles everywhere. And uh, I'll talk about public transport in this city now. El Rey del Pollo. Now, when it comes to getting around, Murcia, in my opinion, is an easy city to move around. Uh, it's a flat city, which is uh, good for walking. There's also lots of uh, buses and other public transport options like that. There's a tram, as we saw before. There's a bicycle scheme. Lots of people get around on their motorcycle, as we can see here. So plenty of movement when it comes to uh, transport options. But the car is king, unfortunately, still in this city, but uh, I imagine over the next decade or so, cars will become less and less in a city like this. And as I mentioned earlier, there are lots of pedestrianized streets where cars have been relegated to second place. Now, when it comes to getting to a city like Murcia from other parts of the country, for example, Madrid, which is where I came from, well connected by motorway. And the good news is for train lovers is that there is also a fast train now that can bring you to this part of the world. The AVE, Ave Fast Train, I think has reached Murcia. In fact, I think it's only been up and running the service for a couple of months. And uh, that is no doubt bringing more tourists to this city. And that's something that I did notice yesterday, even though I was staying in a hotel. But uh, from what I hear walking around the streets, lots of foreign languages being spoken. I've seen lots of English people around, German people around, obviously down in this part of the world, 
for the good weather. And let's be honest, weather is one of the main reasons that you would come to this part of Spain. Yesterday it was 18 degrees Celsius, there were people walking around with t-shirts on, other people were walking around with jackets on, so it's a little bit confusing for some people, they don't know what to wear, because it's quite chilly in the morning, it gets down to around 5, 6 degrees Celsius, and up to around 18 degrees in the middle of the day. So a bit confusing for some people to know what to put on in the morning. So Murcia, a fantastic city when it comes to winter weather, but I imagine that the summers here could get quite hot. But uh, the good news is that the coast is not far away. 30 minutes by car, I think you would be at the coast, maybe less, uh, places like the Mar de Menor. But remember, that those are also very popular places with uh, locals and also people from Madrid. So I imagine that the coastal areas here in Murcia get very busy in those summer months. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to food and drink in this part of Spain, I was surprised yesterday by some of the meals that I had. The uh, produce is very fresh, as you would expect from this area, especially the fruit and veg aspect of that produce. Uh, one of the biggest companies in Murcia is a meat producing company, El Pozo is its name. So uh, plenty of pork dishes available and things like that. But uh, I have been surprised by the cuisine, quite good. And another thing that has surprised me when it comes to food and drink is the quality of the wine, both white and red. There's a local wine area here called Jumilla and they do produce a decent drop of red and white wine. Tried some last night, very tasty, a little bit expensive, but I think that was the, uh, the place that I went to was uh, on the more expensive side of restaurants here, but uh, live and learn. And another aspect of Murcia that I have liked, well, like all Mediterranean cities, is there are lots of outdoor dining options. For example, the one behind me here, everywhere you go, you see outdoor dining options, our fresco dining, as we call it in Australia. Lots of people sitting outside last night uh, before it got too cold. But even when the temperatures did drop a bit, people were still sitting outside. They have uh, heaters next to them. So everything's set up for outdoor dining in this city, which is uh, fantastic. Another emblematic building here in Murcia. I think this is the university. And according to Wikipedia, Murcia is also a university city. Lots of students from all over Spain coming here to study and also local students from other parts of the region of Murcia no doubt studying here in the capital. So a university city, which gives it a good vibe, a young vibe, which is positive also in my opinion. Now here's an example of a bicycle scheme here in Murcia. I think this is the university bicycle scheme. Not sure uh, people use these to get around campus, but uh, pretty old bicycles as we can see here and uh, a bit of a dodgy ride in my opinion, especially this one here probably about 20 years old. Now I've got an admission to make. When I was researching my trip to Murcia, I used the chat GPT, this new chat bot, which uh, you write a question into the chat bot and it spits out an answer. So uh, all of the information that I got about this city beforehand came from that artificial intelligence chat bot, chat GPT. So uh, combining new technologies with my travels. Now one thing that I have noticed in this city uh, in the day and a half that I have been here is that there are quite a few homeless people around the place. Don't know what the story is there, why there are so many homeless uh, people, but I did see a lot of people sleeping rough last night uh, in various doorways around the city. So a bit of a problem here, no doubt related to the high unemployment in this part of Spain. Now one thing that the chatbot did mention is that Murcia is a vibrant city when it comes to arts. And as we can see here, a museum, Paisaje, Figuras y Lugares, en el Museo de Bellas Artes de Murcia. So the cultural side of Murcia also gives it a big tick. Now another landmark here in the city, not for everybody, the Plaza de Toros, where they have the bullfights here. Not sure whether bullfighting is popular in Murcia, but uh, I imagine that it is. Another landmark here in the city, some type of church, banks smack in the center, but uh, nothing compared to the cathedral, which we'll see in a minute. Now we're a little bit lost, not sure exactly where we are, but we've found this fantastic little garden here in the middle of Murcia, an urban garden if you like. And uh, I'll turn the camera around here so you can see it. A real treat bang smack here in the middle of Murcia, this little garden. And it closes at night, obviously, to avoid the botellon or people 
drinking in this park. Now, of course, traveling with little Mia, some people will be wondering, is Murcia a dog-friendly city? So far, it has been. The hotel that I'm staying in allows dogs under 20 kgs, of course. Uh, they provided a bed for her yesterday, uh, food bowl, water bowl, so uh, looking after dogs. And uh, in general, plenty of people out and about with dogs in this city, so Murcia, a dog-friendly city, which is another pro. Now I'm in a fruit shop here currently. Uh, the lady has been kind enough to let me film in the fruit shop. And as we can see here, this is local produce. Everything on this shelf here is produced locally, uh, as are the oranges here as well. Obviously, bananas, no, they come from the Canary Islands and other fruits are not produced here. But uh, oranges, yes, onions, potatoes, mandarins, for example. And as I said, everything that's here produced locally in this area, which, as I said before, is the market garden of not only Spain, but uh, Europe, no doubt, as well. And these mandarins here produced locally, I'm gonna get myself a kilo of them to take back. Uh, they look fantastic. See on kilo, here goes. Now, I couldn't resist buying a few things in that fruit and veg shop and uh, check out this sweet potato that I have bought. It is enormous and to give you an idea of the scale of the thing next to my melon this is a huge sweet potato and it cost me one euro and fifty cents and it weighs a kilo and a half so i reckon that's a fairly good deal so impossible to come to this part of the country without taking advantage of the fantastic fruit and veg and uh, stocking up on a few things now one thing i will say about this part of spain when it comes to the language and accent obviously they speak uh, Castellano Spanish here, Spanish Spanish, but the accent is uh, quite peculiar. Had a few people last night that I didn't understand uh, because I'm not used to the accent here, uh, but it is something that I imagine that would take a little while to get used to should you come to this part of the country, the, uh, the Spanish that is spoken here. Now I'm in the main square of Murcia here, emblematic buildings as I said, the cathedral here, this is the famous cathedral of Murcia, an enormous religious building here, bang smack in the center of the city. And I'm gonna find one more emblematic building in this city before I call it a day on this video, and that is the casino, which according to all reports is worth a look. And according to these indications, it's only a two minute walk up this street. And this is an example of the pedestrianized streets in this city, which as I said, uh, fantastic in my opinion gives people the chance to go for a stroll, get to where they need to go without having to deal with cars, which, as I also have mentioned, are a problem in some parts of Murcia city. And here we have it, the casino here in Murcia, which as we can see in another fantastic old building and a tourist attraction here. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Me puedes poner un café con leche templada aquí? Y una tostada con tomate, por favor. Now it's breakfast time, and what a fantastic place to sit down and have breakfast in this uh, street here, as you can see behind me, a uh, very emblematic part of the city. The cathedral is just over here, and I'm sitting down to a typical breakfast in this part of Spain, which, as we can see, is café con leche and barre de pan tostada con tomate and uh, aceite de oliva. And boy, am I going to enjoy this breakfast. Coffee and a piece of toast, two euros and 40 cents. Can't go wrong with that price, a bargain in my opinion. So as I walk past this massive cathedral here to my right, my time in Murcia is coming to an end and uh, also time to wrap up this video. And it's here on the banks of the Segura River that I'll wrap this video up with the river that divides the city here, this Segura. Uh, as we can see, a little bit low the uh, water flow at the moment, but uh, as we know, water is an issue in this part of Spain. Quick summary, Murcia, medium-sized city here in Spain, 450, maybe 500,000 people, not sure exactly. The Murcia region, an autonomous community, meaning that it has its own government, around 650,000 people in total. Mediterranean area, fruit and veg, one of the main things growing here. Other things when it comes to the economy, for example, tourism, agriculture, as I mentioned, and also construction. So those are the three motors of the economy and lots of people working in service jobs. Is it a good city? Well, from what I've seen, yes, it's a pleasant city. It's a flat city, easy to get around, not expensive. Of course, if you want to spend money, you can, but in general, not expensive 
and day-to-day uh, -day costs would be less here than in other parts of the country. So that's a pro. Mediterranean weather, fantastic. Great food, fantastic. And uh, other things that I like about this city, not too many cons, which uh, is also good. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out like you always do. Give us your opinion on this city if you have been here. If you live in the Murcia region, if you live in Murcia city, let us know your opinion of it and let us know what you think the quality of life in this city is. I think it would be fairly high, but that's just my opinion. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego from Murcia.